Greetings and welcome to another episode of the Empowered Parent Podcast. Joining me, as always, are Ryan and Kayla North. Hey, Chris. Hey guys. Hello, Chris. So, a momentous occasion for our little niche podcast. We have crossed the half a million download threshold. Woohoo! Yeah! <laughs> this is where the confetti drops from the ceiling and correct all lots the, the of balloons loud come noises. down. Yeah, yes. that's good. Maybe, Fireworks maybe text, display. Maybe we, can t- maybe we can text every listener, and then they'll have a little confetti thing if they have an iPhone. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> that like congratulations. If only had their numbers. <laughs> Everybody can get a little uh, confetti pop in their phone. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah five hundred thousand uh, downloads. What, what, what is what is that? Like one hundred and thirty-two, one hundred and thirty-three episodes. One hundred and thirty-three yeah. episodes to go over half a million. Oh, that's awesome! Six and a half years. Yeah. Well, not quite a half yet. Six years, four months. It's yeah. Like the first episode was February twenty sixteen. Chris, it's like being in a band. <laughs> no, like I mean. In a band. I, I, yeah. It is like being in a band, right? Because it is like being in a band because we yep. get to produce something as a unit, um, and and it kind of does like the, the the band cycle thing. It's like when we started it, um, we would you know gather around our dining room table every Thursday night, and, and and Dallas would be here, and then we we would just crank it out like you know that's kind of like the the, the band living together in the rehearsal space kind of part and then <laughs> and then it started seeing some success and it started getting some downloads and now we just sit in the comfort of our homes and leverage technology techno, technology technology leverage technology <laughs> make up new words make, make up, up new, new words, words. <laughs> exactly i didn't have readers when we started this thing you know uh, and, and now and now we have we have nicer we have nicer equipment but we don't actually get together we just like send our pieces into some central thing with some <laughs> the, the engineer lives like you know two time zones over or whatever and takes care of business so it kind of is a little bit like going from you know being in a band kind of a little bit and we do we make something together right and also you know, um, no, no matter, and, and this is this is the truth, right? Because, um, and, and so I'll leave Kayla out of this. She can she can answer this for herself. <laughs> but, but, but this may surprise all of you that Christopher Turner and I have pretty direct conversations about stuff, and we don't always agree. And sometimes we work on each other's nerves. But you know what? <laughs> Every time we fire up the amps, Turner, and I listen to it, I go, man, I'm glad I'm in a band with that cat. <laughs> Likewise, yeah, you know what I mean. I was, I was talking to Russ Hyten about that the other day about the similarities between this and being in a band, and and um, how how just no, no matter what what happens, whether we sit in the same room and record, or we do it in our in our own homes, and use the technology that's available to us. Um, every time I listen to something we produce, I'm I'm, I'm pleased with it, um, and so and kind of and I just, I just like that, you know. I think it's because unlike a band where most of the time the end result is we want our songs played everywhere, we want sellout shows, we want to make money. I mean, making money is nice, don't get me wrong, but I you know, that was never the intention behind the start of this podcast. Yeah. yeah. And I think having that goal always in the back of our minds, even when we disagree on how to handle things a certain way or what topics we might want to talk about inevitably even without us vocalizing it other than in like this setting we all kind of know why we're doing this who it's for and just to let you guys you listeners out there know this is just as much for us as it is for you yeah Yeah, absolutely Um, one time my my wife I uh, was getting ready to either come over to, to, to Ryan and Kayla's house or, or to come sit in my own office. And I had had a really bad moment with one of the kids. And uh, she's like, how can you even go do that podcast? I'm like, that's why I need to go do the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> was was that kind of thing, right? Like, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, we, we need this just as much as, as you guys might need it to listen to it. And so I think... Uh, that to me is the big difference between that's the the one area Ryan, where i would say your brand analogy breaks down is that uh we're not doing this to get rich and famous we're doing this as a means to help others and to help ourselves yeah i'm, I'm yeah. It, 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 it's funny though cuz one of the things that i didn't didn't mention in sort of the life cycle stage of a band 
is actually getting everybody together becomes more complicated the longer you do it, right? <laughs> and so I remember when every Thursday, and now it's like, can you re- can you record on Saturday? And like one of us is like, no, I can't. Well, how about Sunday? Well, I just I got the small window. Can we do it in there? And, and just sort of the, you know, I, I remember watching an interview with uh, Mick Jagger, and he said that that as the Rolling Stones like progressed in their history, um, making records became more difficult to do because getting everybody in the studio to make a record became rather complicated for them. And so that's, yeah, I mean, yeah, we're not in an actual band, but but kind of, you know, for those of us who had fantasies about Close enough. about being in a band, this is going to have to scratch that itch for me, right? <laughs> Well, I had no such fantasies about being in a band, but I did like, before we started the podcast, I, I would talk to moms like all the time, you know, they would call me or text me or send me their friend and say, Hey, we talked to this person. We talked to this person. And the questions were always the same, you know, I mean, it wasn't, it was like same, same question, slightly different circumstances, you know, slightly different dynamics. Um, and so this has given me really that outlet for being able to continue to do that on a bigger scale, right? And being able to like, now we can have thousands of people that are able to like hear the same advice I was giving people one-on-one because I can only mm-hmm. have so many conversations, you know, and you can only have so many phone calls. And after a while, people send me a friend and they're like, can you talk to this friend of mine? And and it's hard, you know, it's a, with yeah. all of our schedule and everything we've got going on. And so I love that we have the opportunity to still be able to have those conversations, but just in a, on a bigger scale, you know, and I, that's, you know, you know, you guys know, and we've told our listeners this before, like I had no in, like desire to be on the podcast. Like when Ryan said, Hey, you want to do a podcast? I was like, no, you guys have fun with that. <laughs> <laughs> and then you were like, please, we just come on an episode. And then I was like, oh, actually, this isn't so bad, you know, because it does. It feels like we're having just conversations with our friends, you know, and just the stuff that we're doing on a day to day basis. And obviously, you know, those that have been listening for, you know, the what you say, six, almost six and a half years that we've been doing this, you've seen that we've, you know, probably said some things in a different way, even if we had similar topics, because we're learning and growing still. We're not just like we've learned everything and we know everything there is to know, but we're still reading books and we're still going to conferences and we're still learning from people that have gone before us. We're reaching out to people and saying, Hey, can you help me? You know, and we're always encountering new and different circumstances, which gives us more things to talk about, you know? So, yeah, I love Chris, it. Chris, yeah, I, I so uh, a couple of things, if I may. I, I still ha- I saw the other day I was going through some old pictures looking for something, and I saw the picture I took at our dining room table when we when we convinced you to come on, Kayla, and uh, we <laughs> only had we had one of those little Zoom recorders at the time. Remember my my analogy about having. Um, you know, not great equipment to start with, and then you can get some nicer stuff. We had two two Zoom recorder, a, a Zoom recorder with two inputs, a couple of mic cables, and a couple of like you know cheapo microphones that I think you still had like a power. That's a dog. Everybody just fights it like I'm gonna. Um, <laughs> uh, with uh, with a switch on it to to turn the mic on or off, and uh, and. Uh, and I took a picture of you and Kayla because it couldn't be the three of us because we only had two microphones, right? <laughs> two, yeah, <laughs> we only had the two. And then she said she liked it and, and she'd be willing to do it. And then we got a little four-track four, four soundboard so we could plug some microphones in, into it. So I, so I saw that picture the other day. I need to dig that out, Kayla. I can post that on, on like social media or something um, this week. Oh, but, yeah. Well, that's um, but, but But the idea behind it was always we're sitting talking and and whoever's listening uh we wanted to create an environment where you felt like you were the fourth seat at the table and so you're just sitting in a conversation with us and i think to to a large degree we we've done that um i think when when people ask like um because you know everybody's got a podcast now uh but but not everybody is sustained right because people get really enthusiastic about it and then you realize it's actually a lot of hard Mm -hmm. work to do it um, it's time consuming. You have to plan. You have to like think. You have to. Um, I mean, you have to learn how to talk into a microphone. 
I remember those those first few seasons before before Dallas came on board. I was doing all the editing, and so if you go back and listen to like the first couple of seasons, you'll be astounded at the low quality of of the audio because I don't know. <laughs> I think he has like a magic button on his computer, and it just makes it all sound like magic. Um, and so, but one thing I did, I was really self conscious about the amount of times I said um. Chris, um, and so when That's you... That's what they um, tell you in like speech classes, right? They're like, um, don't um, say um. <laughs> yeah, and so we'd record an episode and it would take two weeks to get it out because I would listen to it and every time there was an um, I would cut the wave and then like, you know, move the whole thing together and I was editing <laughs> out the ums and it would take me like six hours to edit an episode and it just became so overwhelming that I'm like, y'all, we just got to, uh, you know, quit with all the ums and then remember we went through a stage where we would say... Okay, yeah, Dallas, can you edit that out? I want to try to say that again. And then we just got to the point where we said, look, we're having a conversation. That's a thing. <laughs> like, d if you say something really stupid that you don't want people to hear was ever in your head, we'll cut it. But other than that, it's we hit record, we talk, um, we have that's edits. That's why you get to hear... Well, that's why we get to hear your made-up words, right? Everybody that's gets true. to hear them. <laughs> that's true. Because, because <laughs> if we really are going to do the let's just be conversational thing, then I think we have to be true to that. And so... We, we were getting there. And then the other thing I want to say, Chris, um, you said, you know, it's as much for us as it for anybody listening. One of the best pieces of advice I ever got was from a pastor. He said, I just think about what I need to hear. And then I write a sermon about that because I figure somebody else might need to hear it too. Yeah, that's smart. Well, and I, to that. I've had several conversations with moms in particular who will sit down and they'll start talking to me or they'll ask me questions and then they kind of stop and they go, wait, I feel like I know you because I've listened to your podcast, but you don't even know me at all. So let me tell you a little bit about me, you know? And I actually, I really like that. The first time it happened, I think it was a little, it was funny when somebody was like, oh, hey, I have this because I know it's your favorite. And I'm thinking, I've never met you before, you know, like, <laughs> but I had said something about liking it on the podcast. And so they, you know, mentioned it or brought something for me or whatever when I met them in person. And I thought, you know, it's kind of fun, though, because even though I don't necessarily know every single podcast listener, I have like all these extra friends out there who like, you know, I'll run into them at a at a mom's group or at a retreat or whatever. And they they're like, hey, I feel like I know you and they want to, you know, they feel comfortable enough to come up and ask me questions and talk to me and stuff. And it's kind of fun. You know, I I've appreciated all the podcast listeners that have that have taken the time to like stop and say, Hey, I appreciate the podcast or I learned this or, um, you know, this, this particular episode was really, um, life changing or that piece of advice was helpful or whatever. I, I think that's just what keeps us going. You know, it's what keeps us going. Let's keep making episodes because there are still people that are every day that are bringing home kids who've experienced trauma. Um, and need to go back and listen to some of the episodes or need the episodes moving forward. So. And Kayla, you know, with the catalog of episodes being as deep as it is now, when those folks do approach you and ask you questions, you can just simply say, well, have you listened to episode so-and-so? Exactly. Because that'll help you with your, <laughs> with your issue. <laughs> it's true. I mean, I, I do that a lot when I ha with my coaching clients where I'll say, hey, go back and listen to these episodes. And then, you know, next time we can talk about it. Because then that way they can already have this front loading of information. And then they can ask me the questions that they you know, wish they could have asked me while I was talking on the podcast or whatever. They'll say, okay, so mm. on the podcast, you said this and I'm confused about, or this is the scenario. How does this look in my family? And so it's, it's kind mm -hmm. of fun to have that, you know, resource to be able to send to people when they say, well, what about consequences? I'm like, oh, we got several episodes on that here. Let me, <laughs> let me send you a link, you know, um, well, a lot. Along those lines, one of my favorite things is when you're talking to somebody and they start to tell you, uh, like, like they're asking for some advice on an issue they're experiencing at home, and they say, yeah, I remember in like an episode from, I went back and listened to an old episode of the podcast where you guys addressed that. Here's how we're implementing that. What mm -hmm. do you think? And, and, and it's, it's, it's super flattering um, because 
because I think if the three of us just had to had to have an episode, you know, what we should do. And I've suggested this before. We should get a counselor on here, Chris, to have a therapy session with the three of us and just put it out as an episode. Because, <laughs> no, I'm serious, Kayla. Because I think therapy for, from having to do with one another, or <laughs> therapy from having to do with our children, uh, just or, or both. Uh, probably our childhoods. Um, is well, okay. that's where the gold's at, baby? <laughs> oh, that's where uh, you want to go. I so, see. I see. You want to so, dig deep there, don't you? <laughs> no, I okay. I'm 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 gonna. I'll be confessional on behalf of all three of us because we're family. Um, <laughs> I think that that part of of the surprise of the success of this thing for us. And me individually, and, 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 I, and I'm pretty sure I speak for the two of you on this, is that is, it, is to some degree the three of us graduated from childhood into adulthood with a sense like, are we, are we, do we really matter that much? Mm. You know what I mean? With, 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 with a little bit of self-doubt, a little bit of, of self-doubt around, around worth and stuff like that, right? And, and you nodded, Chris and Kelly, you said, mm. and so for us to do something... Um, that appears to matter to some people is 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 somewhere between humbling and overwhelming for me most days uh, when we think about it. And then we'll go to conferences and retreats and stuff, and people will say, "Hey, can can we? We just love that podcast. We just wanted to meet you." And it and and as, no matter how much that happens, it still feels a little weird to me because I think, yeah, like nothing I've done could actually rise to the level of people caring about it like this. You know what I mean? And that's. That's what I mean by the therapy, because because this this has been a good reminder, and probably has recovered some of that for me at least. Um, my sense of of worth, like 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 I feel I get to feel now like I'm doing something that matters, and so in that regard, this podcast has been therapeutic for me. Mm. Yeah, well, I think we all want to make a difference, you know, and if if we can play a little part in just even you know this 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 realm like you know i don't even know what the what the percentage of families who have been foster parents or who have adopted or taken a kinship placement i don't know what the percentage of the population that is but it's got to be this really small percentage um but even if we can make just a little bit of an impact on that population i feel like you know we've we've done what God has put us here to do, right? You know, we've we've made a difference. We've um we've poured into not only our own families but into other families and that to me um you know, that's that's important. It's it's kingdom work. Amen. Yeah. Well, I think uh Kayla wrapped things up rather nicely just then. <laughs> so, oh uh, We'll take it out on that and thank everyone once again for your time because we know that's very valuable and uh, to echo Ryan is very humbling uh, to think that you've sp chosen to spend that time listening to us and uh, it's proof uh, with half a million downloads now uh, that is we count people who just who just stream so the, the numbers go way beyond that and uh, yeah that is truly humbling and uh, I personally cannot thank you all enough for listening. Thank you. Thank you. As always, thanks again for listening to the Empowered Parent Podcast. Take care.